There's never an easy time to make a hard decision. Never. In grade school, I didn't have any dreams. The only goal my father had for me was to keep me alive. Alive, not dead, till I reached the age of reason. He didn't know if that was 20, 30, 40, or ever. Uh, and I didn't really uh, establish goals other than staying alive because I got in a lot of trouble. Uh, when I was in the uh, grammar school, I tried to kill my teacher, amongst other things. I got expelled, not from the school, but from the district. They wouldn't allow me to go to school in the district. Uh, and I've been arrested and in jail five, six times. Uh, and, uh, but then I went into the military and uh, that straightened me out and made a man of me. But your father was a policeman. My dad was a high profile policeman, hard, 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 tough guy tough guy and what, what, uh, his, what did you learn from him oh uh, well I learned that um, discipline focus honesty the basic rules yeah so there were no dreams when you were young mm -mm. so what did you do after school got in trouble mm-hmm like we all do yeah got in trouble um, how did you did, get out? Did, did awful things um, got in fights beat up people hurt people I was very good at that. Yeah. I was, in that sense, I was a high performer. I could really kick the out of people pretty a, well. You were a fighter. <laughs> yeah, correct. So how did you end up in Wall Street? Uh, by the grace of God, I lived. I uh, went off to the military, entered a private, came out four years later, an officer. And I was getting a big award in the military. And there was a two-star general that was uh, pinning something on my chest and he said, you know, if you were in the real world, Danny, that's what they used to call me, I was a lieutenant, you could probably get rich. And a light bulb went off over my head. I had never thought of that before. I didn't know how much a million dollars was, except for about that same time frame, one of the other young officers inherited $1.4 million and he was buying all the officers drinks in the officers club. And I said, well, why is John buying us all drinks? He says, he just inherited a million dollars. And I said, write it down for me. I'm 22 years old. And he put it with the zeros. I go, F I didn't know how many zeros a million had. And then the general said that if you went out in the real world, Dan, you could probably make a lot of money. I then, within a week, I took action. I reversed my paperwork. I just put in paperwork to be a permanent military forever. And I reversed it to get out. I got out five, six months later. I came back. Uh, Went back to school uh, where I had to get special permission because I had flunked out three times out of university and then I graduated ultimately with honors and uh, where I wanted to go where the action was and the action in those days and this was in 1972 was uh, on Wall Street. But most of you don't have, and I say generally speaking, most of you don't have faith in yourselves because you have low self-esteem, no self-confidence. You look like shit. you dress like shit. And you, you blame it on the 21st century, the reason why you dress the way you do. 25 years ago, if you come to a seminar like this, you'd all be wearing suit and tie. 40 years ago, the women would be wearing hats. This is my uniform. I, I, I don't go to sleep like this, but I mean, this is my uniform. It has been for a long, long, long time. Dress, if you want to get money from banks, Dress like the president of your country. If you, unless you're from Pakistan or India or something. Dress like the president or the prime minister of your country. You only have one time to make a first impression, kid. You come in looking like some of you, I wouldn't give you toilet paper. Most of you, I'd be embarrassed the way you're dressed. The, uh, but from a guy, I was a barrio bad boy in the barrio of East Los Angeles. To... The Guthrie. That's a big leap. That's a big, big. It doesn't. I can't imagine. Well, came close last year. I was uh, honored by the Queen of England. I am now, as they call, a member of St. John. A member of St. John, which is just below. Thank you. Thank you. And it's, it, it's, it's a derivative of the Templar, the people that supposedly took Christ's body, da-da-da, you know, the Knights of the Templar. That's what it's a derivative of.
but for a kid in East LA who almost killed his teacher. Now, was I thinking about killing the teacher? No. I was up on the, you'd call it the second floor with an aquarium and I looked down at the teacher and the teacher had pissed me off. And back in those days, I wasn't the kind of guy you'd want to piss off. So I dropped the aquarium, it weighed 45 pounds. By the grace of God, Allah, Buddha, he moved. And it didn't hit him in the head, it hit him in the shoulder and it crushed his shoulder, right? Clavicle. If that had killed him back in the mid fifties, I wouldn't be sitting here. I, the queen wouldn't have given me anything, not even a postage stamp. And I wouldn't be living in the castle because I would have spent the, part of the majority of my adult life in prison. But he lived by some... How did your father respond? He beat me to within an inch of my life. Did you ever beat him back? I never, oh, I would never even think of hitting my dad. My dad had a 56 inch chest, a 28 inch waist, and 18 inch biceps, and he ne never lifted weights. For you six packers out there, never lifted weights. He was an uh, all American gymnast in high school. I would, oh, I, just, I get chills even thinking about hitting him. I mean, he would have killed me. But see, Michael didn't bring me here to make, if I leave here with anybody liking me, I fail. You understand what I'm saying? I fail. I'm not here to be your friend. You want a friend, go get a dog. I'm here to drag your sorry ass across the goal line, no matter what it takes. And there's no better on the planet than me at doing it, as demonstrated by all the tens of billions that created. Can you imagine? Just, I'm getting all excited now. Just look at this. I, you know, even the sorriest ones in here, I could probably 50 million. And there's a couple of billionaires out there. I got a strain to find one, but I mean, there are. The odds are there's at least two or three billionaires in this room to be. Potentially. Yes, sir. Potentially. Two or three. But would those two or three make the sacrifices necessary? When so I was... What, what, what is necessary? What's the best advice? How the, to do the, it? the best advice is find something you love. Find something that can change a billion lives. Zuckerberg is a classic example. He changed more than a billion lives. Added value. Correct. Added value, change, you make a billion lives better, potentially. You may not get to a billion people, but potentially you can make a billion lives better and the odds have just gone geometrically up for you to become a billionaire. And if not a billionaire, a whole bunch of money.